Today we're going to resurface these beat up concrete floors with self-leveling concrete mix. I've been working on renovating this Joshua Tree home. It has really nice plaster walls, but when we pulled up the carpet, we saw that the concrete floors were an absolute mess. The rest of the house has tile floors which are in decent condition, but they're about half an inch higher than these stripped down concrete floors. I pulled off the baseboards. This is important because I don't want to pour concrete that then traps the baseboards in place. I want the new concrete to stick firmly to the old concrete and not flake right off. So that's why I'm going to prime the surface with concrete bonding adhesive. After vacuuming up all the dust, I diluted the bonding adhesive with water per the manufacturer's recommendations and then used a roller to coat the entire floor with the mixture. This is a very time sensitive process. You want to pour the concrete about two hours after applying the primer. We're using Quickrete Self-Leveling Floor Resurfacer. It's a high grade concrete mix with no large pieces of aggregate. This means it mixes more like gypsum mud or plaster than traditional concrete. This was my first time using a self-leveling concrete mix and I think I put too much emphasis on minimizing the time in between the bucket pours. And while it is important to not have too much time in between the pours, it's way more important to make sure each bucket is thoroughly mixed. We learned this the hard way on the very first bucket when a big chunk of only partially mixed concrete came right out of the bottom. Our second and third buckets were better, but still had clumps of varying sizes. Now I'm used to working with typical concrete, and when you have a few dry spots like that, it's not as big of a deal. You can just kind of mix it while it's in the form and spread the dryness around. But with self-leveling concrete mix, it's so important to have consistency because even just a few small clumps can change the way the concrete mix self-levels. I was starting to panic a little bit. I tried using a rake to even some spots out. That really didn't work at all. And so at this point, I just wanted to focus on getting a couple buckets right so to have a little bit of experience before doing another coat over the top of this first super fail one. In the end, it really just came down to adding a tiny bit more water. We used exactly what the manufacturer recommended on the bag but found that in our super dry, low humidity climate, adding just about 10 to 20% more really helped. We also just mixed each bucket for longer. We were so worried about reducing the time in between the buckets that we didn't properly mix what was in the buckets themselves. We also developed a way to test to make sure each bucket of concrete was thoroughly mixed. We had an extra bucket, and when we thought it was mixed, we would pour that bucket into the empty bucket to see if there was any clumps along the way. We started getting it right near the end, but as you can see, our early attempts were, well, kind of a disaster. Luckily though, this first coat was just a little over a quarter of an inch thick. So that means we can pour over the top of it and end up nice and flush with the tile floors. This failure also gave me the opportunity to test out how securely the new concrete was bonding to the old. I used my hammer drill with a chisel attachment to shave down some of the high points and was pleased to see that the concrete wasn't flaking off from the original surface. I let the whole project sit for a couple of days while my frustration simmered down and then went through the entire process again. Once again, I applied the concrete bonding adhesive over both the new concrete and a few bare patches of old concrete. I took a much more methodical approach to mixing it. I didn't try to hurry. I just focused on making sure each bucket was thoroughly mixed and tested for clumps before pouring onto the floor. At first I thought I was going to do just a single second pour, but after seeing how uneven it was, I decided to even it out first with a mini pour, fill up all the bare spots, and then do a single coat over the top of that. Now before we get to the final pour, let's hear from the sponsor of this video. This video is sponsored by Extra. Extra is the first debit card that builds your credit and earns reward points just like a credit card. Here's how Extra works. 
Users connect Extra to their existing bank account, Extra spots them for everyday purchases, and then users auto pay Extra the next business day. At the end of the month, all payments are tallied up and reported to credit bureaus. Users also earn redeemable reward points for every purchase they make. As a former freelance designer, I know that building up a solid credit score can be challenging, which is one of the reasons why I like Extra. Why is it important that this is a debit card and not a credit card? Well, today there are over 100 million Americans who don't want or can't get a credit card. Yet there are very few alternatives for establishing your credit other than with those risky credit cards. Extra's mission is to make credit building safer and more accessible for everyone. Extra is for anyone, especially if you're new to credit or working towards rebuilding your credit score. Because Extra connects to your existing bank account, there's no credit check and you can't spend more than what you have. I like using Extra for all my work-related subscriptions and monthly reoccurring expenses. It allows me to organize all these types of expenses in a single place and get rewarded for doing so. So sign up for Extra with the link in the description and start building your credit with a debit card. Yes, a debit card. All right, back to the project. This final pour went really smoothly. It's really interesting. It's not like I learned any new skills or some secret formula. It was just being able to tell visually when the concrete was thoroughly mixed. Just adding in that technique of pouring it into a second bucket to check for clumps and just taking a little more time for mixing it was really all I needed. But it took a couple fails, at least for me, to get there. As I poured the different buckets, I also started to see how this pattern kind of emerges where one pour laps into the other ones, you almost get these kind of marks that are similar to what you would see on the sand at a beach when a wave pulls back from it, these kind of overlapping scallops. This was completely unintentional, but it really got me starting to think how I could actually use that aesthetic as an intentional part of a future design. I was really glad this was the final pour because we were running out of height. This last pour came up right flush even to the edge of the tile. Everything was looking pretty good, although I did notice on the last few buckets, as the wet concrete cured, little bubbles popped that didn't quite fill all the way back in. But this wasn't that big of a deal. Once the concrete had fully cured, I just mixed up a cup full of it and filled in these little pock marks. I actually really liked the pattern that came out in the floor and decided against doing a stain or concrete paint over the top. I also thought about adding a clear coat to prevent staining, but considering that we already have a rough aesthetic on the plaster walls and we're going with kind of rustic modern furniture in it, like the bed that I made out of teak, be sure to check out that video, we thought just letting it naturally age over time with whatever stains come would be the authentic way to go. Now in the time since I did these floors, I have been experimenting with this same self-leveling concrete mix on a variety of furniture projects. I poured a thin coat of this concrete on top of a masonite door to make a lightweight, sturdy concrete table using prefabricated legs from Semi-Exact. I'll put a link to this video in the description box below. It has a lot of useful information including how to add pigment to this mix, and how to reinforce it using fiber tape. Adding pigment to the mix let us take that aesthetic that we discovered on the floors to the next level and it adds even more contrast between the scoops and pores of the wet concrete. If you want to learn more about the concrete products that I use go to quickcrete.com. Thanks to Extra for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check that link in the description. And also if it's not too much trouble and you haven't done it already hit that subscribe button. Alright thanks everybody. Bye.